especially be beautiful to those whom you have mutual rights. Indeed, God is all watching. The believers have conscious awareness of God, speak nothing but truth, so He can rectify your deeds, He can forgive your sins. Best among you is follow God Almighty and Muhammad, peace and blessing upon you. So, the Lord will watch this. <coughs> For today's Papa, I have chosen a verse from Surah Al-Hujrat, Surah number 39, verse number 13, part of the verse. In Nakra Ma'akum and Dumbaya Kaukum, in the eyes of Allah, the best is who is righteous with God, conscious of awareness of God, and is fully aware of God. And Mutakti, Taqwa, righteousness, conscious awareness of God. That's the criteria in the eyes of Allah. But within that ayah, I will focus on the subcategory of this ayah, inshallah. The criteria that Allah set is the Taqwa. Allah wants something which is hidden, you and I don't know. How much taqwa I have, you don't know. How much taqwa you have, we don't know. So what Allah wants is hidden from people. So therefore, inherent lesson for us is that we shouldn't be judging each other. What Allah loves, nobody can see. So that's the ultimate criteria in eyes of Allah. But within that, I will talk about only one aspect tonight, today, inshallah. That is Islam and women rights. What does Islam say about women? That topic comes up in traffic among Muslims, but also when you do interfaith dialogue, when you talk about Christians and Jewish friends, this topic keeps on coming up again and again. The Islam suppresses women, you force them to put a rag on their head, you're not allowing them to go to education, they're not allowed to get out of the house, they're not allowed to drive, they can't be a part of board of directors, they cannot participate in an election, you know, they're suppressed they're at home, that's it. So this keeps on coming back. So whenever you have a dialogue at interfaith level, it comes up. And when it comes to interfaith, we have this different interpretation and different concerns that we need to have this, which is why 1.9 billion plus fastest growing Muslim religion has more than half of its population is females. Women in Islam. How do we isolate? Why do we isolate? What's the role of that? a huge segment of population in Islam. How Muslim men are supposed to deal with women, a Muslim woman. What does our deen teach us about that? What is our responsibility? So there are four different stages. A daughter, a wife, a sister, a mother. So inshallah, we'll go back to see that Nabi Sallallahu and see how the <coughs> Prophet Sallallahu addressed these issues and how he instruct us when it comes to those four different stages, pretty much everybody goes and goes. You have a sister, you have a wife, you have a mother. So this, these are things inshallah we'll talk about. But whenever it comes to Islam, the binding authority is Quran. So not Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But the seed of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is very important. Somebody who's a Muslim who was saying, you know, to Ibn Taymiyyah, I'm not feeling comfortable about Islam, you know, my heart is not in the Quran anymore. I'm questioning a little bit, what do you think, what book you recommend? 